on the 21st of January, 1793, citizen Louis Capet, formerly Louis XVI, King of the French, was taken to the Place de la Révolution, now the Place de la Concorde, in Paris, where he was executed for the crime of high treason. With him died the former supreme executive power in the French Constitution of 1791. Since the overthrow of the monarchy in August of 1792, the executive had continued to function with ministers handling the different areas of executive power. Where these ministers had originally been appointed by the king, they were soon appointed by the Constitutional Convention that had begun sitting in September of 1792. This system made for a weak executive branch subjected to constant meddling and reshuffling by the legislative branch. In January of 1793, the convention decided to set up a Committee of General Defense, made up of members from all the major standing committees. It turned out to be a large and unwieldy group. Faced with ever greater crises in the winter and spring of 1793, the convention decided to regularize and strengthen the executive branch while at the same time firmly subordinating it to the convention. The convention was unwilling to give additional power to anyone outside of its control, and so it created the Committee of Public Safety, an executive committee made up of deputies from the convention itself, to manage the overall war effort, allowing the convention to get on with crafting emergency legislation and writing a new constitution for France. The Committee of General Defense had been tasked with organizing the overall military effort. Given the convention's decision in December, to offer aid to all those nations who wish to overthrow their monarchs, and the expansion of the war to include England, Spain, and the Dutch Republic by March of 1793, given the explosion of unrest in Brittany and the Vendée by the same month, the convention wanted to strengthen the Committee of General Defense. A Committee of Public Safety was proposed by a, a Girondin deputy, Maximin Inar, in the aftermath of General de Maurier's failed attempt to lead his army against the convention. Georges Danton supported Inar's proposal, and the committee was created on the 6th of April. Initially, Danton was the leading voice on the committee. Uh, Maximilien Robespierre had been offered a seat, but it declined to join what he thought was a useless body. As Danton, Danton had said, though the committee would be, quote, a hand to grasp the weapon, of the Revolutionary Tribunal. So what was this Revolutionary Tribunal then, and why did it need a committee to direct it? The Revolutionary Tribunal was a high court set up in Paris by a decree of the 10th of March, 1789, specifically to try crimes against the revolution, political crimes. Ordinary courts were to handle civil and criminal offenses as usual, but the Revolutionary Tribunal would handle crimes that threatened the new republic. These crimes involved opposition to the Republic through conspiracy or through direct action, and came to involve economic crimes such as hoarding, price gouging, fraud involving supplies for the military, and so on. Why did there have to be a court like this? Its main point was to clear up a huge backlog of trials for those accused of acting against the Revolution. In his speech proposing to the tribunal, Danton had said that the deputies had to be terrible so that the people would not be, a reference to the September massacres. In order to re avoid a repeat of the September massacres, by which some 1,200 people were killed in Paris by so-called popular courts entirely outside the control of the national or even city government, in which the accused had had no procedural protections at all, the convention decided to set up a court meant to give expedited justice to political offenders. The tribunal was not a kangaroo court. It had judges and juries and heard evidence. It allowed the accused a defense. It did have lower standards of evidence than the ordinary French courts, but even so, on average, only about one half of those brought before it were convicted. The Committee of Public Safety, proposed by Inar and endorsed by Danton, would in effect be a new ministry of war made up by deputies to, of the convention, without violating the rule the deputies had created against any member of the convention becoming a minister and serving in government. The committee took over efforts to supply the military and coordinate strategy, 
in effect, taking over direction of the war and sidelining any ambitious generals who might be in it for themselves rather than for the Republic. The committee was increasingly involved in national economic issues, making sure that France produced enough of the right goods to keep the armies fed and equipped while keeping food on the tables of the workers who produced the goods necessary for the war effort. The Committee of Public Safety would also work closely with another executive committee, the Committee of General Security. The Committee of General Security was created by the convention in October of 1792, and it was meant to be a kind of a political oversight committee, a kind of political police, looking for criminals and traitors that threatened the Republic. They were tasked with setting up efforts nationwide to pursue traitors and to enforce political laws, uh, such as monitoring foreigners on French soil and maintaining the internal security of the nation. In this sense, you might think of them as being something like uh, America's federal police, the FBI, uh, mixed with uh, many of the functions of the Attorney General's office. When the Revolutionary Tribunal came into being in March of 1793, the Committee of General Security could refer individuals to it, providing what evidence it had, so that the Tribunal could do its work. Members of the Committee of Public Security, I'm sorry, of General Security, were initially elected by the Convention, but after September 1793, its members were appointed by the Committee of Public Safety. Back to the Committee of Public Safety. In July of 1793, as France continued to face the threats of multiple civil and foreign wars, the committee was restructured to make it more efficient. Its membership was set at 12, and Maximilien Robespierre, seeing that this was going to be a powerful and useful committee, agreed to join it. The membership of the committee stayed stable for the next year, roughly. The 12 members represented different groups within the convention, and this allowed the committee to get a wide variety of decrees passed by the body, making it so the revolution had its first strong, efficient wartime government. The committee included technocrats, men of strong uh, Republican credentials, who were less dogmatic and even moderate compared to uh, their fellow members on the committee. Men such as Robert Landais, who took charge of food supplies, Lazare Carnot, who took over military affairs, and jean bon saint andré who looked after the Navy. A key speaker for the committee was Bertrand Barrère, an able politician who had avoided being identified with any specific group in the convention, and thus was able to communicate freely across a variety of lines. And Maximilien Robespierre himself, Georges Couton, and Antoine de Saint-Just represented uh, Jacobin opinion, and especially Maximilien Robespierre was seen as uh, the incorruptible, a person who was always going to put the needs of the country above his own needs, and in fact, his own safety. Joining them were Jacques-Nicolas Biot-Varenne and Jean-Marie Collot d'Herbois, both of whom were tightly linked to the far left, to the real radicals in Paris. Uh, and this allowed those radicals a voice in the governing committee, in effect, co-opting some of the radical energy and putting it at the service of the war effort. These men and their other colleagues, both technocrats and, and politicians, uh, were responsible for steering France through its most grave crisis, all while facing increasing uh, criticism as a unit, as a committee, from the Parisian radicals and increasingly from moderates in the convention. The period during which the Committee of Public Safety effectively led France from uh, late July 1793 until late July of 1794 uh, has sometimes been referred to as the period of the Jacobin Republic, but it has also been called the Reign of Terror. And to understand the Reign of Terror, we will have to move on to a different talk. Thank you for joining me.